In Braver Angels, one of the things that we really try to do is get people engaged with those on the other side politically, because that's an important way to reduce political polarization in this country. We know that's important because political polarization can have corrosive effects on our democratic form of government and the various institutions we rely upon. Um, I think uh, one of the things that talking to other people does is to help them better understand the person and what their views are, make them more human as opposed to the stereotypes and the dehumanizing that happens when people are highly polarized and don't don't talk to the people on the other side. So in Braver Angels, one of the things that we do to try to reduce political polarization is we teach skills that drive from communication and conflict resolution skills. So I'm going to go through a few of those skills that we offer in some workshops. We call them the LAP skills, L-A-P-P. And the LAP skills uh, are referring to listen, acknowledge, pivot, and perspective. So let's go through those one at a time. First, listen. Now, when we talk about listening, yeah, we all listen. We hear what people say, but it's important to understand that with listening here, you want to have a genuinely curious approach to what the other person is saying, and you want to delay your thinking about your response. You want to really try to get into their head, get into their shoes, and understand how they came to believe what they're telling you. All right. So uh, you do this, you listen without interruptions, you don't make critical comments, you don't immediately tell them what you think instead. There's a time for that later. First, you focus on understanding where they're coming from. And there are a couple of things that you can do to help with this. One is to ask them questions, follow up with other questions of understanding. And what I mean is ask them something that helps you clarify in your mind what they're thinking. You know, not a gotcha uh, or loaded question. So like a loaded question might be, how can you uh, be that way? How can you support that position on abortion? That's anti-woman. Well, that's a question, but it's also a, a loaded question that has lots of negative implications for the other person. So we don't want to do that. Instead, if you want to know more about where the person stands on abortion, you might say, okay, tell me a little more about how you came to this view on uh, abortion or something like, so what is it about the issue of abortion that led you to decide you were against having legal abortions? So those are genuinely trying to understand where the person's coming from. So that's uh, important to learn about what people are saying, to listen carefully and really understand where they're coming from. When you do this, when you listen carefully that way, with genuine curiosity, the other person feels heard. They are more likely to lower their defensiveness and their emotionality, and that's really important in having a genuine conversation. And um, it, it kind of helps the relationship, you know. So when you're feeling like someone's really listening to you, it gives you a little better positive view of that other person so things can develop uh, good in that way. So that's listening. Now the next one is A for acknowledge. We also include agree in that, but the main thing here is acknowledge. So acknowledging means that in you respond to what you've heard from them in some fashion that lets them know you really heard what they had to say. A common way to do this is what many people understand and have learned about as active listening. Basically, what you're trying to do is, after you've heard what their views are, you in some way paraphrase or restate in your own words what you heard them say. So, for example, uh, someone's telling you their views about abortion, and you might say something like, okay, I think I understand it. From your perspective, you see ab abortion as best decided between the woman and her doctor. Is that right? Okay, so that's an example of active listening or paraphrasing or restating what you heard. Don't carry any negative implications. Just really try to capture what they're thinking and what they told you. Um, then another thing that you can do that's helpful for acknowledging is to mention to them 
any area of agreement that you may have or, or that you have a similar view. That's really important in developing the relationship and helping people feel like you, you know, you're you know, a reasonable human being and that you have some common ground. That can build upon the ability to have further productive conversations. So uh, let's say we're talking about gun control. So you might summarize uh, something about their views and then say, and you know, I agree with you when it comes to enforcing existing gun laws. I think that is important. So we definitely have common ground there. So when we do this, when we acknowledge and even state where we find any agreement, that helps the person feel heard. Uh, it makes certain that you heard it right because if you give it back to them and you misunderstood something, they can correct you. And even agreeing just a little bit helps establish some common ground and some good feeling for continuing a positive conversation. The next, um, the next skill is a little bit difficult. That's the hardest one. It's called pivot, P for pivot. And in pivot, what you're doing, it's kind of like the signal on your car. You're signaling to someone that you're about to go in a different direction. So here, you're getting ready to want to have your say after having listened for a while. So to pivot, you say something to indicate you're about to move on and just get a sense of whether or not they're willing to hear what you have to say. So it might be something simple like, okay, I've, I've, I hear what you've said. I have some thoughts on that too, if I could share that with you. And there are a lot of different ways you could do that. You can explicitly ask for permission to share your views, or you could just say in a respectful way, well, let me tell you some thoughts I have on that matter. And then if they object or they decide they don't want to go any further into the political conversation, they can let you know. But if you don't see any indication that they are going to object to that, then you can continue with your perspective. And that's that last skill, the other P, perspective. So in perspective, what you do is you're trying to tell them what you think and what your views are on the topic. You do this, though, without dismissing their own perspective. You simply talk about what your beliefs are, how you view things. You don't speak for anyone else. You don't speak for the entire half of the population that believes in this particular party or something. You just say, this is how I see it. So there are several tools we can use in expressing our perspectives. One is to use I statements. I statements are those cases where you use the personal pronoun I to say, I think this way, or I view things this way, okay? You do that instead of what we often tend to do, which is utter a truth statement like, this is the way it is. Because when you say, this is the way it is, you have automatically discounted what the other person had to say. So right, even if you're absolutely certain in your mind that your way is right, don't say it that way. Say, my view is, here's my perspective on the topic. Another thing that you can do is uh, to use yes and in response to what they're saying rather than yes but. We know how yes but automatically raises defensiveness. So if someone says something, you can say, yes, I hear what you're saying there. And my view is, and just that little difference between the but and the and can make a little difference in terms of the defensiveness. So let's use a couple of examples here. Let's say uh, uh, for an I statement, uh, we're talking about guns again. So an example of uh, expressing your opinion rather than stating something as a fact would be something like this. You know, I worry that if we ban guns, it might limit our ability to protect ourselves. Now, you could have said, if we ban guns, we're going to lose our ability to protect themselves. But that's a more definitive statement, a, a foretelling of the future. So instead, something like that. Or maybe with global warming. Well, my fear is that global warming will wind up harming our economy and increasing the number of diseases we encounter. So again, you're saying, this is what I'm thinking. This is what I worry about when I look into the future. And then a very powerful way to talk to people and help them understand where you're coming from is to share a personal story or life experience that led you to your view. 
So, for instance, uh, you might say if you've had a career in mental health of some sort, you might say, well, in my mental health career, I've seen the harm that comes from failing to ensure treatment, appropriate treatment for people with mental illness. So that tends to make me very concerned about getting services for the mentally ill because of the negative implications if we don't. It has negative implications on uh, the person, their family, friends, first responders. That's what I worry about. Then um, the other thing would be signaling. This would be a case where if you're really emotional and passionate about something and you're realizing it and you're trying to keep stuff together, you can just admit that up front. Say, you know, I have to admit, this is a topic where I have some very strong opinions. So just be aware of that. And then you can continue with, you know, saying what you have to say. All of these skills uh, in terms of sharing your perspective can be helpful in terms of reducing defensiveness in the other person, help them better understand what you're thinking and why you think that way. And it provides some context for that person, maybe even allow for a little extra empathy when they know how it was that you came to that view. 